series called Sabbath, and we felt it was the right time to talk about Sabbath. The Sabbath, obviously traditionally, when we think of the Sabbath, we think about that taking that time off, that day off in the week. We think about how God um, created the world, and then he, he rested for the day, the day as an example to us that rest is important. And we just felt it was a really important time to do this, because what we hear from people a lot is... Like today, even, I was like, where's Carmel? Saying, how's your week? And Carmel's like, yeah, great, busy, but great, right? And that's what we all say. The winter, we all say the same thing. We're like, yeah, our weeks have been great, but we've just been so busy. And, you know, we're trying to arrange to hang out and have fun with each other. And then, you know, you, you kind of look at your diaries and you're comparing diaries and you're realizing you can arrange it, but you've got to, like, arrange it three or four months in advance <laughs> to actually sit down with someone and have a nice evening together, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit crazy, and I think the whole world's like this. We just seem to be really, really busy, and, and maybe not even getting much done. You know, we, we all seem a little bit busy, a little bit stressed uh, at times. And so we wanted to take some time to talk about this, because I, we believe it's important. We believe God thinks it's important. I, I, a couple of weeks back, I, I, I opened up the series, and I, I talked about how actually hum, mankind's first day on this planet was the day of rest. It wasn't that God like put them to work and then said, right, now you get a day off. Like God worked six days and then he rested, but our first day was a day of rest. And actually God wants us to, to be people who are rested and work out of that rest rather than being people who are trying to catch up all the time and get rest, if that makes sense. And then last week, um, Terence shared a message that, that talked about, fight, he was talking about finding peace. And his main idea from that was that, you know, we can find peace when we know who's in the boat with us. The disciples were, had all kinds of chaos in that boat and they woke Jesus up and he said, peace be still and everything just went peaceful. When you know who's in your boat, you can find peace. Today I want to talk to you a message that I'm calling refreshed. It just works. I'm sticking with the idea because, as I mentioned before, uh, both Ben and um, Andy showed me up with amazing PowerPoints. <laughs> and so now we're, we're getting into PowerPoints again. So um, today's message is called refreshed. And I, I feel like God wants to refresh some of us today. I'm not just, it's not, that's not just preacher talk. I feel like God wants to refresh me. I feel that like it's already begun in today's service. The word that Dave brought about restoration. It's God wants to restore us. He wants to refresh us. He wants to rebuild us into, into being in a healthy place. You know what refreshes you might not refresh other people. In our house, in the morning when we're getting ready, Leah will go in the shower. And this is what Leah does when she gets in the shower. She takes the temperature dial and she turns it until it gets to like the, the, the highest level. And then she keeps going. She like unscrews it a little bit, like <laughs> trying to take it way past what is it. And, she, and she comes out of the shower at the end and she goes, that was lovely. I feel so refreshed. And if I'm not careful, this has happened before, I'll get in the shower and turn that thing on and my skin is peeling off. <laughs> because when I go in the shower, I like to turn it like to like the middle and then a bit more into the colder bit. I like it cooler. I like to go in and go, oh, it's nice and cool. And I feel more refreshed, right? We all get refreshed differently. This week, it was my birthday. I know. I know, yeah. 30. And uh, it wasn't that funny. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't that funny. Calm down. Um, and um, <laughs> I was 41. And Lee says to me, what do you want to do for your birthday? So I thought about it. What do I do? I want to go for a little hike. Yes. I want to go for a little hike. So, we, so Leah's like, all right. <laughs> we'll do that then. So we went for a little hike. And then, and then we went, I went and found a little, little pub. I had a little like, pub lunch. It was great. And then Leah's like, what, what do you want to do now? And so I was like, what do I want to do? I was like, do you know what I want to do? I want to have some proper fun with my kids. And I was like, I remember when they were younger, and, like, all they wanted to do was, like, play sword fights and wrestling with me all day long. Like, and I was like, oh, not again. 
And now I'm like, now they're older, I'm like, I miss it. I want to have some proper fun. So I'm like, right, Leah, will you get me some water balloons? And so we came back from, uh, just in time for the kids to come back home, and we filled these water balloons, and we're in the backyard, and we chucked water balloons at each other and ran around for a few minutes. And it was brilliant. <laughs> and then after that, Leah's like, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I, I don't know, I'll chill out for a bit. And, 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 the, and the kids had some dinner and stuff. And, the, and I thought, well, I'll have some, I'll have some snacks, have some chocolate and stuff, and watch a bit. And I thought, well, do you know what I want to do? I want to watch the new Beverly Hills Cop. Because I grew up with like Beverly Hills Cop, and I was like, oh, I loved it. In fact, my ringtone on my phone for about 10 years was the theme tune to Beverly Hills Cop. And they've just released a new one on Netflix. I'm like, I want to watch that, and it's my day, and I can watch it. So me and Leah watched Beverly Hills Cop 4. And then, as, as it usually happens, around 9 o'clock, Leah fell asleep. And then... <laughs> And then I was like, what am I going to do? So I just, I just watched some other stuff, ate some more chocolate, whatever. And then, literally, it's getting later and later. And I think, should I go to bed? I'm like, I don't want to go to bed. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying this day so much. So I went, I got a jacket for my birthday, like a, a, a one that's like quite warm. Because I'm into like camping and stuff, and I want, I want like a warm jacket. So I'm like, I'm going to sit outside with my warm jacket on <laughs> and a cheeky little drink. And I sat on my decky looking at the stars. And Leah woke up, and it, she woke up like 5 to 12 at night. And she come in, and she's like, I'm going to bed. And you come, in, you come in, I'm like, do you know what, love? I want to just sit here for a few more minutes. I don't want to miss a single minute of this day, because I've enjoyed it so much. <laughs> and Leah must have hated it. <laughs> and you might be sitting there thinking, Beverly Hills Cop? <laughs> you know, I'd rather watch Bridgerton or something. Please don't. <laughs> Far too saucy for Christians, Bridget, Bridgerton. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some of you might be like, go for a hike. No, no, no I want to go for a spa day. <laughs> but I felt like we all get refreshed in different ways, right? But one thing that we all have in common, God wants to refresh us. And God will refresh us if we let him. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And I love that moment. And maybe you've experienced moments like that where you just felt, you know what? You let out a big sigh. Like, oh, I feel content. And I feel like those moments in life are hard to come by these days. And yet I feel like God's leading us to live lives of refreshment. Not lives that are just all about us. But he wants to bring refreshment to our life so we can live out of refreshment in everything that we do. So I want to look at Psalm 23 as like a main uh, scripture for today. Psalm 23 verses 1 to 3. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Or as Dave was saying earlier on, he restores my soul. You know that word soul? We think of the, of the word soul. If someone said to you today, like, do you believe you have a soul? Most people would reply thinking they were asking if we had a spirit, right? Most people are thinking, oh, yeah, you mean, you mean like, have I got a spirit that's going to live on after, after I die? That's what we kind of think about when we hear the word soul, but actually, when the Bible talks about the word soul, what it's talking about is three things. This is what the word means. The word that was originally written in the Bible when translated, it, we call it soul, but it means your mind, your will, and your emotions. So what that verse is saying there, it says, he refreshes or restores my soul. What he's saying is, is that God refreshes and restores our thinking. The things that we desire and the things that we feel. He wants to bring refreshment and life to the way we think. He wants to bring refreshment and restoration and life to the things that we care about, that we desire. He wants to bring refreshment 
and life and restoration to our emotions, to our feelings, to how we feel on a regular basis. That's what God wants to do for me and for you. Does anyone here wish they had healthier thoughts, desires, and emotions? I, I, I definitely do. <clears throat> So I want to look at this, this portion of scripture and just pull out a few things from it. Um, the word refresh, um, it means, if you look at the, the actual um, word, original word, it means to turn towards, to turn towards, it's part of the meaning, to turn towards. And so I want to put the question forward, like, what can we turn towards in fact, it actually means to turn towards a kind of spiritual relationship. So refreshing, refreshment in God's mind is turning towards him. On my birthday, when we went out for this hike, it was a, really, it was a, it was a small hike. And we popped into Andy and Janine's on the way. And um, Leah was like, Oh yeah, Luke's got his map and his compass, and I was I was I was embarrassed because it was just a small walk. There's no need for it, right? But the thing is, right? This is this is how my mind works. I'm interested in this type of thing, and you probably think Luke, that's such a geeky thing to be interested in. But I'm 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 interested in learning how to read a map right, and use a compass, and, and you know, you might laugh at that, okay? But when the zombie apocalypse comes, right? <laughs> And all your phones don't work, and you're lost, you can come to me. Right? I just, it interests me. And the reason why it interests me, I like the idea of unplugging, getting back to like basics. And so I, was, I took it, not because we needed it actually, I took it because I just wanted to muck about with it while we were there and just see if I could, if I, if I knew what I thought I knew how to use it. Um, <clears throat> but that part of me that, that is interesting, that kind of stuff, it comes from this part of me that actually likes to be in, con in full control. You know, if I, if, I got, if I was out in the peaks somewhere walking and all of a sudden I had no phone signal and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find where I was because I had no phone, and I was stuck, I like the idea of thinking, well, I'm fully in control. I, I can work out where I am and I can work out where I'm going and, and, um, and, and, and nothing can kind of uh, cause me to be at risk or danger. I'm fully in control of, of what's going off. And I think that, that feeling is natural for all of us to want to be in control in our lives. Um, and sometimes we can, we can look at our lives and think about how difficult it is and think, you know what, I've tried everything. Nothing I do seems to make a difference. Or if I had the money, I, would, I wouldn't be in this mess. Or you might say, my life doesn't look like green pastures like it, we just read there in, in, in Psalms. Or you might be thinking, you know, I've been a Christian for a long time and I'm still going through all this stuff and I don't feel at peace and I don't see, like, the abundance that, that God seems to promise me in, in the Bible um, and what, what he's talked about on a Sunday. So, you know, I don't always feel like in control and I, I want to be in control. But I believe the key thing to being refreshed in your life is actually the first part of Psalm 23, verse 1 to 3, where it says... The Lord is my shepherd. In other words, I'm not my shepherd. If I want to live a refreshed, restored life, it can't be me that's a shepherd. You can't be my shepherd. I know shepherd means pastor and all that. And you're thinking, well, Luke, you're my, forget all that for a minute. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. If we want to find real refreshment in our life, it starts with this. Getting this understanding that the Lord is my shepherd. Jesus had two main requirements for his disciples. He said, follow me and have faith. Those are the two things that Jesus you know, said to his disciples as, was, was all they really needed. The very first thing he said to, to them, really, follow me me. When we follow Jesus, it's not always easy. It's not always fun. It can be difficult, but it's always good. And 
it's always from a right place. Because as we follow Jesus, we can find restoration and we can find refreshment. Because, as Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. It says in Isaiah 40, verse 31, one of my favorite verses, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. And they will walk and not be faint. That word renew there, it means to grow up in strength. It, it almost has an imagery of a tree growing. If you hope in the Lord, you make him your shepherd, he will grow in you a strength. I want to be refreshed by God. The second thing is actually, the word refresh also means, it means to turn towards, but it also means to turn away from. Sounds confusing, right? It's, I mean both things. Well, you're turning towards your spiritual relationship, but you're turning away from things that bring you death. That's what it means. So how can we turn away from things that bring us death? Well, it says, going back to our, our, our verse there, the second part of it, the Lord's my shepherd, I like nothing. It says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. You know, it's interesting, there, there actually there are four things that a sheep must be free from in order to lie down. The first one, the sheep has to be free from fear. Sheep will not lie down, no matter how green the pasture is, if they have fear in their, in their will that moment in time. John, uh, 1 John 4, 18, though, says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. So God wants you to turn away from fear as you turn towards him because he has the perfect love for you that drives out all fear. God wants to refresh and restore you by helping you be free in your life from all fear. And we can have that mentality that if God is for us, who or what can stand against us. God wants to refresh and restore you by helping you be free from all fear, from turning away from fear. The second thing that sheep needs to be free from in order to lie down is friction. Friction. A sheep will not lie down if there's tension in the flock. If there's other sheep that are butting with it. I've seen this recently actually, um, but with cows. I was walking, that, that, walking my dog in the field and looking ahead, there was two cows and one cow bolted like crazy across the side of the field. It went and hid. It went and hid in the trees. And this other cow followed it. And I thought, great, they're out of the way because I was walking that way. And I gets around the corner and heads towards the gate. And then they come charging towards me. But it wasn't running at me. It was the first cow was running away from the second cow. <laughs> and that first cow, all the other cows were laid down in the field. They were resting, but that one cow couldn't because the other cow was chasing it around. <laughs> Bullying. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Sheep can't lie down when there's conflict. And we can't be refreshed and restored when there's conflict within us. The sheep need to be free from conflict. Matthew 5, verse 44 says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only, what? Be still. <laughs> and then in Ephesians 4, verses 1 to 3, it says, Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience, showing tolerance for one another in love, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. God wants to bring refreshment and restoration to your life by you turning away from conflict and tension and turning towards him and building unity because it enables you to lie down. The third thing a sheep 
has to be free of, in order to lie down, is it has to be free from pests. If, 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 a, if an insect is buzzing around, if, if, if a parasite's on the, on the sheep, it, it won't rest. It will constantly be agitated and moving around all the time. It can't settle and rest in green pastures. And God wants to refresh you by keeping you free from the power of spiritual attack. And he does that by teaching you that the devil has no power over you. The devil's a pest. He's a pest, he's a liar, he's the king of distractions. Listen, what, what's the best way to deal with a wasp? Ignore it. Ignore it. There's a wasp flying around. I just ignore it. Other people in my family have a different approach. I, they don't feel very refreshed. <laughs> I ignore it. It flies around, and then, oh, it's gone. It's gone. It says in James 4, verse 7, Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Oh, death, where is your sting? Right? God wants you to be free from the devil pestering you so that you can be refreshed. And the best way to do it, just ignore him. He has no power. Oh, it's just you, devil. <laughs> Often we say things like, the devil's attacking me because I'm a threat. Well, yeah, maybe. And um, that could be the case. But you know who else the devil attacks? Those he can. Best way to deal with a wasp, just ignore it. <laughs> the, the fourth thing that a sheep needs in order to be able to lie down is it needs to be free from hunger. Sheep won't lie down if it's hungry. God wants to refresh you by freeing you from unsatisfied hunger in your life. John 6 verse 35, and Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. It doesn't mean that, you know, um, you'll never need to eat again. Or God will always provide you with hamburgers, you know. That's not what it means. It means what you need, you find in God. He won't leave you unsatisfied. And you know what? At times you might feel hungry, but Jesus will feed you. He let, I, I heard this recently, I've been watching the, the, the new series of The Chosen, and uh, I went back and watched um, the pre previous series, and there's this great bit at the end of season three where Jesus says to Peter, he says, I let people go hungry, but I feed them. God wants to feed you. He doesn't want to leave you being unsatisfied so that you can lie down in green pastures. Okay, and then the third thing that God wants to do to refresh you, he wants to draw you close to him. Uh, it says there, um, the Lord's my shepherd, I like nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me besides quiet waters. Um, <clears throat> in the Bible, water is usually represented by the Holy Spirit. In John 4, verse 13, I haven't got that on the screen. Uh, so Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become like a spring of water welling up to eternal life. You know, when we think about, uh, we, when, when we think for God's presence, um, we th when we think of God's presence of the Holy Spirit, we often think of like the gifts of the Spirit. And we think about you know, the fruits of the Spirit. We think about the power to do with the Holy Spirit. We think about, you know, the tongues of fire that land on, 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 on the, the people's heads in that upper room. We think about all those types of things. We think of Pentecost, but also, God also leads us besides quiet water. When we're in his presence, a quiet means resting place. It's where the water comes to rest. Sheep won't drink out of moving water. They'll only drink out of water that's still. And God wants to bring us to quiet, still waters. He wants us to experience his presence and find peace and find refreshment. 
And we find that in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is fire. The Holy Spirit, he is power. But he's also a place to rest. He's a place of refreshing, resting, renewal for our spirits and our souls. He brings healing and he brings joy and he brings strength. Romans 8 verse 6. The mind is governed by the flesh. Sorry, the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. I believe God wants to bring refreshing to your life by exposing you to his Holy Spirit presence. That's why I love worship so much. Because when I'm in worship, I just it's like sometimes sometimes it takes me a song. Right? I don't always try to jump into it straight away. Sometimes I, I, you, you've had, maybe you've had a bad week or you've, you've had, you, know, you just feel a bit tense or, or whatever. I, I feel sometimes that God has to break through walls in me. But when he does, when he breaks through those walls... And I mean, I can sense his presence. It's like this overwhelming sense of acceptance and love and renewal and joy from being in his presence. And we can all experience that. That's why it's so important to worship together. Because we can have that on our own at home, but it's never as powerful as when we are together worshiping him. And you see, the great thing is, is that this, this is, this is, for me, this is the heart of God. Worship's supposed to be about us honoring and loving him. But he rewards that with his presence. And I, I honestly, worship on a Sunday morning for me now has become the best part of my week. Sometimes I feel tired and I'm like, I can't wait to worship. I don't just mean tired physically. I mean, Ty, like, I've had enough. <laughs> I've had enough of people. I've had enough of problems. I've had enough of everything. And yet I come into God's presence and I feel whole. God wants to draw us close to him. And for us to draw, cl- for, for us to draw close, wants us to draw us close to him and for us to, you know what I mean. James, I, I thought I'd read the scripture. James 4 verse 8. Come near to God. And he will come near to you. That's the promise. God will not force himself on you. But if you say, God, I want you, he'll say, you've got me. That's how it works. Amen. Gather the band up, please. That's it, thank you. Have I been helpful? <laughs> Why don't we stand to our feet? We're going to go back into worship. I really feel like we need to focus more on this stuff uh, than we have been. I think the world needs us to be powerful in the gifts of the Spirit. It needs us to be uh, active in helping people. But it also needs us to be different. Different in who we are. Like Charles was saying earlier on, they need to see us glowing. I don't glow when I'm stressed. Well, I'll read it. I'll go red. <laughs> People need to see that we're different. We're connected with our Heavenly Father, and that's bringing peace and joy and love into our lives. We need that just as much as we need the power. <laughs> we need to be people who are refreshed, not stressed, confident, not cowering, at peace, not pressured. It's a sign of being a Christ follower because we know and are loved by the one who put the stars in the sky. Let's just finish by praying. Lord, we want to make it our life's goal to know you more. fact as I'm praying this prayer if you if anything resonates with you I wasn't going to do this but we're going to do it if anything resonates with what I'm saying right now just raise your hands where you are Lord we want to make it our goal today to know you more 
I want to experience your peace, your refreshment in our lives, your restoration. Lord, we want to make you our shepherd. We turn away from all the things that, that bring us death in our life and we turn towards you, our heavenly father, our shepherd. We're looking for the things that you want to give us. We lay down our need to be in control. We lay down our fear of the future. We lay down all the distractions that come our way. We lay down all the hurts that we have from people and we focus on unity. We lay all that down, we turn away from it and we turn towards you. And right now, God, for those people who have their hands raised, I pray, Lord God, that you would refresh us, that you would restore us. We are your flock. All our hope is in you. We love you. And Lord, as we come into this last song, I pray for more of your presence. We're here to meet with you. Heal our brokenness. Exchange our pain, our sorrow for garments of praise. Lord, we ask that you would give us all that we need to live lives that reflect people that know you. Can we just wait for a minute in silence and just let's just listen to God. I believe God wants to speak to some of us individually, not, not on the front. I believe God wants to speak to you right where you are in a way that's personal to you. to take you on a hike <laughs> in fact let's do that let's just in our mind now let's just imagine let's imagine we are with God let's imagine that we're somewhere safe whatever safe looks like for you imagine that you're there with you just, you just sat there enjoying it feeling safe think about how that makes you feel in that place that sense of security sense of peace and then just just as you're sitting there enjoying that space I want you to imagine that Jesus comes and he sits right next to you Jesus is here now for you not for the person next to you doesn't disqualify you he doesn't say you weren't good enough this week he says I'm here for you let's just let him 